Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted. Which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, thy Son, I come to you today. And I ask you to use this in a way that would please you. Help us to obey you, Father in heaven. God, help us to bring forth thy word unto this people, this gathering. And those that would hear it by tape, bless those also at a later date, God. In the name of Jesus, the only thing I know, Lord, is I woke up this morning and I heard those two words, final authority. And then I laid there and after a while I heard them that came back to me again, I heard them again, final authority. And then I went on out through the day and then this evening, God, you know how that you moved up on me. I don't have to remind you of how that you moved and how you carried me through the word because, Lord, thou knowest all things. But I thank you for it. And now I'm in your hands, Lord. I stand before these people in your hands to preach a message that I've never preached before. And I'm asking you to help me because I, I don't have nothing, Lord, to depend on but you. So here am I, Lord. Send me. In the name of Jesus Christ, use me for thy glory, I pray. Let the Spirit of God take control and move in this service. Do something for these people, Lord, I ask. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Praise God. The Lord told me, he said from the very beginning, he said the devil has always tried to take control of what I had. Said from the very beginning, the devil has always showed up. How many knows he showed up in the days of Adam and Eve? Can you say amen? Everything was going fine. They was uh, in the paradise of God. It was heaven on earth. That's exactly what it was. And everything was going fine until the devil come along. Hallelujah. Did you know that the devil used to stand upright like a human being? Did you know that? He came walking upright when he appeared to Eve as a, a, like somebody on two feet. Amen. But the curse of God came upon Satan because of his decept deceptive and deceiving spirit against God's creation. God said from henceforth from this day that you'll eat the dust of the earth and you'll crawl upon your belly from this day forth. How many knows this is the word of God? And God brought the devil down and put him upon his belly and he began to swim across the ground from the day that he came out against Eve. It is the word of God. So the devil thought he was something great. He thought he was something other that was mighty and powerful. And he stood upright and he marched out through the land. Amen to God. And I want you to know that there was a greater power than that of the devil. And the Lord put the devil in his place where he belonged. From the very beginning, God put the devil in his place. Can you say amen? Glory to Jesus. God's going to help us if you'll pray for me. Glory to the Lamb of God. Let's everybody get your mind on the surface. Forget about everything else. Forget about your trials. Forget about your troubles. Forget about your worries. And forget about your discouragement. And let's look to Jesus. How I many knows if He don't bring us out of it, we're going to stay in it anyway. If God don't move for us, we're going to go down. But God's going to move for us. Let's get a positive thinking attitude right now and begin to reach out to God and ask God for blessings upon our hearts and our souls right now in this service. God's going to pick your spirit up. 
If you'll enter into a spirit of worship and praise right now, the Lord will pick your spirit up and you'll leave here with a blessing. You won't have to go down out of this place with your head hanging down, but God will lift your countenance up. How many knows he will? Somebody say, Lord, lift up my countenance and lift up my countenance now where I can receive something in this service tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah to God. And so the devil got down there and started slithering across the ground. How many of us did? Praise God. If you don't think that God's big enough to knock your props out from under you, you just try to get big as God. You just try to raise yourself up and act like that you're something else. Mean you ain't nothing outside of God. We got to realize and remember forever and forever that mean you can do nothing without Him. Amen. God will knock your props out from under you. God will put you back where you belong. How many knows God will put you right back down that dust where you came from if you don't keep your attention and your mind and your eyes fastened upon the Lamb and He said, Amen. Glory to Jesus. I said, Glory to Jesus. One of the most pitiful things to behold is a heady, high-minded person because they but one way for him to go. And that's down. That's the only way that a heady, high-minded, proud, arrogant person can go. The only place that they can go is down. Glory to Jesus. But if you stay down, you won't never have to be have to worry about being brought down. How many knows that I mean you'll stay at the feet of Jesus? The one way that means you can go and that's up. I mean you constantly going up, going up, going up. How many wants to go up in God? Well, stay humble in His sight and keep that spirit. Amen, like that you need. And God will keep raising you up and raising you up. And he'll set you on top of the, the victory mountain. Can you say amen? Glory to God. I'm headed for victory mountain. I believe there's a victory mountain. And I'm headed to the top of Victory Mountain. Hey Amen. I'm marching up Glory Hill. Hallelujah. If there's a Glory Hill, I'm walking up Glory Hill. Hey Amen to God. I didn't, I didn't come out of Hallelujah Valley. And I'm marching up Glory Hill. And I'm headed for Victory Mountain. Hallelujah. I said Hallelujah. And ain't no devil going to stop me. Ain't no devil going to stop you. And ain't no devil going to hinder you. Because God's going to bring me and you into his fullness. Oh, Yes, he is. Hallelujah. How many feels that policy spirit taking you over? Amen. God's a doing something here at a harvest time the Bible church. Oh, yes, he is. God's lifting up a standard against the powers of Satan. How many knows he said when the enemy comes in like a flood that God would lift up a standard? How many knows the word of God will stand against the powers of Satan? And he say glory to God. Oh, yeah, we are. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Glory to Jesus. And devil, he, he got the big britches, ain't that right? He exalted himself. Hallelujah. He thought he's going to get out there and he's going to preach a little bit. Well, the devil, he preaches sometime. Yeah, the devil, he preaches sometime. If you had caught it a while ago, even Pilate was trying to prophesy. Hallelujah. I read to you just a while ago, and God told me when I was reading that scripture, but I didn't have time to stop and explain it. God said, even Pilate was trying to prophesy. Knowest thou that I, that I have the power to release you and let you go? Knowest thou that I have the power to crucify you? How I many knows, old Pilate, he was trying to prophesy to Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, You can have no power except my Father, which is in heaven, give it to you. He said, You ain't got no power. If God don't give it to you, you ain't going to crucify nobody. You ain't got enough of nails to drive in my hands. Hallelujah. You ain't got a hammer big enough to hold me to the cross. You ain't got a soldier that's got enough of medals that's got the boldness to stand against me. Hallelujah. If God don't let you do it, you'll never crucify me. How many knows that's what he is saying in so many words? You ain't got no power. Man, you prophesy all you want to. You, you, you can say, thus said Pilate, or thus said the herd, or thus said whatever. You can say, thus said Caesar. But you still ain't got no power. Come on, say glory to God. How many believe that God is the final power? He is the final authority. How many knows that's right? God told me, he said, the devil's always trying to stand up against me. He said, he always has. And how many members of time did 
Old Lucifer, the son of the morning, stood up. Hallelujah. He was right there in heaven. He started his own little mission trip. He started his own little campaign right there in heaven. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. He got some followers too. Yeah, he got some followers. He, he made the circuit of heaven. Lucifer, the son of the morning, he was going, he was going from place to place holding his little crusades. Amen. I ain't just, this ain't just something that I'm coming up with. I'm going to show you in God's Word. I said he was going throughout the circuit of heaven. And he was getting a two or three over here and getting three or four over here. And he was gathering some people together. How many believe he was? Yes, he was. Hallelujah. And he began to think he was something other. He got about a third of the people following him. It is the Word of God. I said about a third of the people. Amen. It was in heaven country. Got to, after and follow, started following after the sun of the morning. Lucifer, and he exalted himself up, and he thought he was as high as God was. How many knows he tried to exalt himself above the stars? He tried to exalt himself above the heavens. But I want you to know one time, one day, God come through there with that cutting sword, and he began to whack and cut that old Lucifer, and he cut him down to size, and the Bible said, how art thou falling on Lucifer's son of the morning? And God cast him out of heaven. How many knows that God brought the devil down. I said God brought Lucifer down and he come down to the ground and he say man glory to Jesus hallelujah and the Bible said that there was war in heaven and Michael fought the archangel of God fought hallelujah against Satan praise God which was Lucifer and it was a battle that went on in heaven and they said the devil was cast out that old serpent, Lucifer himself, was cast out of heaven. I preached a message about the fall of Satan before, didn't I? I did. I preached a message about the fall of Satan. Hey, man, I say what kingdom he's got. He, his kingdom ain't as big as he thinks it is. His kingdom ain't going to stand. How many knows ain't but one kingdom going to stand? And that's the kingdom of God. Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Sister Perez, they sing that song sometimes, don't we? Satan, your kingdom's coming down. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Old Lucifer walking around there to the sun of the morning. He said, I'm just as powerful as God is. He said, look at me. He said, look at the people following me. Hey, man, God will take every one of your followers away from you. And you won't even have one person give you a drink of cold water. If you try to stand against God, God will wipe your followers out and God will wipe you out right along with them. How many believes that's right? Oh, Cor, I stood up one day in number 16. Amen to God. And he come against Moses, a man of God. And God prophesied through Moses and said he's going to open the earth up. And he swallowed Cor up and all of his followers. And the earth closed back upon him. And I say, help us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Pharaoh and his army wasn't big enough to stop the people of God. Why? God ain't studying if your name's Pharaoh or not. God don't care if your name's Pharaoh or who done it, either one. Amen. And God gets rid of all who done it, gets through with him. He would to God, he left God alone. Praise God. God's going to cut his wheels out from under him. Praise God. God will dry up his oil fields. How many believe God? He's strong enough to dry up Comanian's oil fields. And he's say, man. Somebody say glory to God. I said, somebody say glory to God. Oh, Antichrist. Oh, spirit of Antichrist. Talking about he's as powerful as God. He ain't got enough of power to get out of the town. I said, he ain't got enough of power to walk to the restroom by himself. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. He couldn't even and breathe if it wasn't for God. I mean, knows that's right. When people begin to exalt themselves and try to put themselves up as God, even one way for them, and that's down. That's down, down, down. And I say, help us, Lord. It's the truth anyway. Oh, yes, it is. I said, oh, yes, it is. Praise God. Just like old Papa going all over the world, kissing the ground everywhere he lands. And having folks kiss in his hands. He ain't doodly squat. I'll tell you what he is. He ain't doodly squat. He ain't even squally do. He wouldn't even make a good squally do. Let alone a doodly squat. 
Hallelujah. God gets tired of his activities and his action. God will whittle him down too. And he say, man, he has got a little humble spirit about himself. If it wasn't for that, he'd probably done been whittled down. God will whittle down one right behind another. God told me, he said, even one thing that's going to be the final authority. And he said, that's the set of Lord. He said, the set of Lord. He said, my word is going to stand. He said, all of the kingdoms is going to tumble to the ground. He said, even one kingdom that's going to rise in the earth. There's only one kingdom that's going to stand. And that's the kingdom of mine, your Lord, and mine, your God. And God's going to reign in that kingdom. And he said, praise God. Hallelujah. Go ahead and praise him if you will. I feel his glory in here. Praise the name of Jesus. And he told me today, he said, I'm going to have the final say so. He said, hold on to me. He said, I am. Yeah, he is too. If he hadn't told me nothing else, that'd been enough. If he had just said, I am a stop, I said, well, glory to God, I believe it all the time. But he went on, he said, I am the final authority. Hey, yes. I am the final say. Hey, Amen. There ain't going to be nothing said. Jesus said, I could call 10,000. I could call 12 legions of angels, which it was about 10,000. He said, I could call 12 legions of angels. Lord God, pile up you. They, they wouldn't even be a good, greasy place left of you. God would deteriorate your very being. Hey, Amen. How many knows he could have done it? Oh, he could have wiped out a pile of all his soldiers and Caesar and all his armies. Hallelujah to God. I said he could make made old Caiaphas and Ananias and all the rest of them. He could have made them look like what they really was. He could have showed them up for what they was. Can you say man? Praise God. But Jesus was born to this end that we might bring forth believers unto righteousness and believers unto holiness. Let me tell you something other that the wisest man said, Solomon. And I always say besides Jesus because we know he was all wisdom. But the wisest natural man that walked on the face of the earth that we have record of, we all know was Solomon. Just a natural man. Proverbs 29 and 2. Listen to what he said. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked by rule, the people mourn. Amen. Hallelujah. How come you think the Israelites was mourning? Because the righteous was not in rule. Because Pharaoh and his armies and Pharaoh and his kingship had brought the Israelites into captivity. And the ungodly and the unrighteous and the unholy was in rule. How many knows that's right? One thing wrong with this nation right now, I believe this all my heart. I don't know what you're going to think about it. The man's dead and gone. I don't use the same thing about somebody's dead. But I believe one thing brought the judgments of God on this nation was old, old cussing Truman. Hallelujah. Every other word he spoke was a cuss word. He cussed in the White House. And how many knows that God don't like no such carrying ons? So I said Truman was, a, I don't know what Truman was. I know he was one of the biggest curses that ever come to the White House. Hallelujah. Praise God. They, they had a bunch of uh, wine bibbers and the beer guzzlers in the White House. How I many knows they go around to these nations and they call themselves, uh, what they call that when you do that like that? Uh, Toast, yeah, toast one another. I used to know what it was, but I got away from all that. They click the glasses together, click and toast one another. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. We need a president in this nation. Amen. If he goes to Russia and they want to give a toast, he said, Well, I'm going to pull the vodka out. You pour me some water in there because I'm living for the Lord God of the heavens. I'm serving the God of Israel. And I don't care. You might get mad at me, but I'm not going to drink your tequila. I'm not going to 
and drink your smart off vodka. Hallelujah to God. Amen to Jesus. If you want to toast me, toast me with water. I ain't going to drink your champagne because I got something to drink that's sweeter than any vodka, that's sweeter than any champagne, that tastes better than any Mexican tequila, and it's called the wine that comes from God. I got my own wine with me, and I'm drinking out of his bottle. I mean, it's drinking out of the Lord's bottle. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm drinking wine from the new bottles. Oh, yes, I am. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Ain't too many people rejoicing now. Amen. We're, we're in the days of mourning. We're in the days that the soup lines is fixing to come into existence. There's something that's taking place. There's a scarceness that's taking place. There's a shortness that's taking place. How many believe that's right? Hallelujah. This nation don't have the reserves that it used to have. They don't have all these your grains and flowers and sugars and, and different kind of, of groceries and things stacked up and grains and stuff like they used to have. I don't care what they say. I said, don't care what they say. And they're going to have less than this when the reports of next year come in from the crops that's been stricken by the droughts of this year. They're going to be a scarcity of food like you ain't never seen or heard of before. And people's going to be starving death right here in the United States of America. Hallelujah to God. That's how come I say you better join up with Jesus. You better get in his rank right now. You better get on his side. You better realize that your authority ain't worth nothing. That he is the final authority and he'll feed you and he'll lead you beside the still waters. And when the ground is cracked open, amen, that you can get your feet hung in the cracks of the ground because it got so hot and parts. God will lead you beside the still waters and God will restore your soul if you'll keep your trust and your confidence in Him. How many believe you will? Go ahead and give him a hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah! He told me, he said, I am the final authority. Hallelujah! Listen to the words. Listen to what happened in Matthew Chapter 7, verse 29. Listen to what they said about Jesus. Matthew 7, 29. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. God's bringing forth the leadership right now, right before the very eyes and the very ears of the people. That people testify and acknowledge that when I got around that man of God, and it ain't pinning no flyers on no human flesh, but people testify, there's something different. There's something about this man that's not like everybody else. How many knows that's what they said about Jesus? Hallelujah. When Jesus took the pulpit, or when he took the sacred stand, and he began to preach, thus saith the Lord, when he began to tell about the works of the Father, and he said, man, he said, never a man taught like this man. This man's got a wisdom. He said, what new doctrine is this? By what authority doest thou these things? Where did you get a word like this from? Where did you get a wisdom like this from? How many knows it comes from the Almighty? God's going to house son in this last days. Amen. It's going to lead his children on. I said they're going to lead his children on. And you're going to have to take knowledge of them that they have been with Jesus, that they in touch with God, that they in touch with the word of God. Because you're going to have to say, as it said in the days of Jesus, never a man spake like this man. Amen. There's something other that's different about this man. And he say, amen. God's going to have a leadership that's going to lead you in the complete victory. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, he is. I said, yes, he is. Of course, everybody's not going to follow. But the ones that are here, the ones that will receive, and to those that believe, God's going to lead you on. Hallelujah. I'm going to start singing the song and believe in God. Lord, lead me on from day to day. Hallelujah. For thou art the holy way. And those song says, Though friends forsake me all alone, I ask the Lord to lead me on. 
Friends, I'll drop you on the right and turn away from you on the left. Amen to Jesus. Praise God. And uh, ever so often, your friends will let you down. Hey, look. Sometimes they be your closest friends, or you count them your closest friends, and they'll let you down. You ever had one of your close friends let you down? I'm talking about just totally disappoint you. Well, I could loan you some of mine if you hadn't, because I had about, about two or three dozen of them. Hallelujah. I had, a, I had about four or five well-known, supposed to be good friends let me down this week. Hallelujah. I can loan you some of mine. How many believe that's all right? But, lo, they let me down. I'm going on. I ain't got my confidence in no one or two people, but I got my confidence in God. I'll do what and the Bible says. Follow them as they follow the Lord. Amen. But I'm not going to get my eyes fastened on nobody. And if they go down, I'm not going to go down with nobody. Amen. I'm going to hold my head up. How I many of you going to hold your head up? Thank you, Jesus. It depends upon you where you spend eternity at. And nobody has to go to hell. Amen. If you end up in hell, you're going to have to blame your own self because you ain't going to blame nobody else. I don't care how much you blame somebody else. You can end up in the pits of hell. You can bawl and squall and scream and, and, and accuse everybody in the country of causing you to go to hell. But once you get there, you there. You, you're there once you get there. Ain't that right? How I many knows the parable of the rich man in hell he lift up his eyes? Being in torments in hell, he lifted up his eyes. And he saw Lazarus far off in Abraham's bosom. Praise God. I said, praise God. He could blame all five of his other brothers. He could blame everybody in the country, but he was still in hell. He was still in hell. And he said, ain't nobody can travel into hell. They ain't got no, they ain't got no interstate highways. There ain't but one road that leads to hell. And it's a one-way road. They ain't, they ain't no... Two highways going to hell as, as, a, as a one way. Did you hear me? How many has ever been down a one way street? And you go down that one way street and you turn around and you start going back the wrong way and the, the street will be covered up with automobiles and you just can't get through. The road is blocked like a great guff fix. You just can't get by. Hallelujah. You can tell the law all day long that you didn't know that was a one-way street. He'll write you a ticket just about as long as you are. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said praise God. That's what it'd be like if you were to end up in hell. There ain't no returning. Once you get there, that's it. And if you ain't right with God, you're subject to end up in hell before the sun comes up in the morning. You can sit out there and look at me crazy if you want to. But if your heart ain't right with God, you're subject to end up in hell before the sun comes up. Because if you die in the condition you're in, and you ain't got the blood of Jesus applied to your heart and life, hell's going to be your home. I said, hell's going to be your home. Somebody say, Lord, save me from this place. God, save me from this terrible place. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Somebody said, well, said, if I start towards hell, said, God's going God's to help me. You better help yourself. I mean, knows the Bible says, seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Amen. Let the unrighteous man turn away from his unrighteousness and let him come unto the Lord. Amen. The call's going forth and God done raised up his messengers and it's a message of repentance. It's a message of coming to me, said the Lord. God's want to save some people and he's going to save some people and it can be you if you receive him. How many believe that's right? Praise God. Oh, God, keep us out of that terrible place. There's a place called hell. Let me read on. I'm talking about the final authority. When God says left, that's, that's it. That's the final word. If he says enter thou to the joy of the Lord, that's the final word. If he says depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Get on the left hand side where all the rest of the goats is at. All the rest of our button around, button up excuses because they didn't live for me. Ain't that right? And once that word is spoken, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. That's it. 
Somebody says, I'm going to wait until I get before God and pray. Yeah, you're going to pray. Some of you might wait until you get before God before you start praying. And you definitely, absolutely, for certain are going to pray when you stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. You definitely, absolutely, for certain will find you a place to pray at the pearly gates. It might be right outside the pearly gates. It might be right outside the pits of hell. But you'll pray someday. The Bible said that every knee is going to bow. How I many knows it is the word of God? The Bible said every knee shall bow. The Bible said every tongue shall confess. Hallelujah. And whether it mean you like it or not, somebody said, I ain't going to get down there no floor in front of, of them people and pray. Well, you're going to be standing before the judgment seat of Christ, and it's going to be thousands upon multitude of thousands of people, amen, lined up to be judged. And you're going to be a bawling, and you're going to be a squalling, and you ain't going to be ashamed in Day, and you're going to be praying God have mercy on me a sinner because of iniquity for I never knew you he's going to cast you into hell and he knows who we are it is the word of God somebody say help us Jesus he is the final authority how many believe he is and your friend ain't going to be there then because you're going to appear individually in a single file before the Lord. He ain't going to call you up and all your friends. At one time, he's going to call you by your name. Come forth. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. He's going to call my name. Charles Edward McCrory, come forth. And whether I want to come or not, I'm going to have to come. Amen. That word's going to cause me to have to come. I can't resist that word. Amen. And whether they be a complete wholeness and righteousness in my life, or whether I be filled up with sin and corruption, I'm going to have to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The Bible said, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of the things that we do in this walks of life, whether they be good or whether they be bad. Every individual, everything that breathes is going to stand before Him on that day. And either you're going to enter into the joys of Lord, are you going to hear that final authority word? Amen. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. And I say, help us, Lord. I feel some other coming down from the Almighty. I feel a great spirit of conviction coming in here. Every one of you need to pray. Help. Everything in this congregation need to say, Lord, if there's anything in my life that's not like you, take it out right now. Cleanse me, Lord. Purify me, Lord. Make me whole by your word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Come on. Go ahead and pray. Amen. Go ahead and pray out to him. God, we need you. God, we need you right now. Have mercy on our souls, Lord. Talk to him for a while, children. Talk to him, people, for a while. Ask him to help you right now. We're nearing the end. We're nearing the end. Yes, we are. He ain't got a bunch, bunch of days left. He ain't got a bunch of years left. Whatever you want to do for God, you better start doing it. You better start doing it. You better put you on some boldness. You better get you some backbone. You better get you some courage about yourself. Ain't that right? The boldness and the courage lives in God's children. That's where the courage is at. You ain't fooling nobody but yourself. If your heart is not right with God, and you think you're brave and bold and bully, you ain't even doodly. You, you couldn't even qualify in the doodle squat family amen that's right because he's the one 
How many knows he is the final authority? He told me this morning, he said, final authority. He said, it's the word of God. He said, that is the final authority. Praise the name of Jesus. God gave me this message, saints. He said, sure, as I'm standing before you, God gave me this message this afternoon. He spoke this to me, those two words, final authority this morning. And he gave me this word. I tried to get something else together, but I could not get nothing else together. I could not get anything else together. And God carried me in his word. Verse at a time. Chapter at a time. St. Mark chapter 13, verse 34. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey. And that's what he's done. Who left his house. And gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. I mean, you got a command to watch. How about this? We got a command to watch and pray. One place it said, Watch ye and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Ain't that right? The spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. Hallelujah. The flesh ain't willing. It'll take the spirit to get the flesh willing. You ain't never going to live for God until you begin to surrender your flesh to his will. Until you begin to say yes out of your heart as the Holy Ghost as that convicting power begins to strive with your heart. Then's the time to come to Jesus. You're not going to be converted any time you take a notion either. A lot of people say, well, I want to wait till I get 26 years old. I'm going to just do around here and have me a good time. When I get about 45, well, or be about ready to settle down in, and I'm going to find me an altar somewhere or another. I'm going to find me a holiness church. I'm going to find me a church, some kind of church, and I'm going to repent. And somebody says, I'm going to, I'm going to at least shake hands with a preacher. And at least the Lord will see me shaking hands with a preacher, and he'll credit that to my account. Ain't no preacher going to save you either. That's right. They, they ain't a preacher on the face of this earth can save you. They got a word that can save you. A real man of God's got a word that can get you saved. But there ain't no individual can save nobody. Hallelujah. The Bible said it's through the foolishness of preaching that man is saved. But Jesus is the one that does the saving even Jesus Christ himself says, only God can forgive sins. How many knows the words of Jesus that only God can forgive sins? It's through the name of Jesus that your sins are forgiven. When you call upon the Almighty God in the name of Jesus, he is the mediator, the intercessor, and he'll get your message to God. How many you will? No man can come to the Father except he come through and by me. The only way that you can get to the Father is through Jesus Christ, the Son. You're going to have to call on the name of Jesus one of these days. Every one of them, you're going to call on that name. Somebody say, I ain't even going to say that name. Yes, you will. You might not say it until you get on your dying bed, but one of these days you're going to call on the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that breathes one of these days is going to call upon his name. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How many knows that people's dying lost without God? Every day that rolls around, people's in and up right in the lake of fire. Right in the midst of hell, people's in and out, and they ain't never going to get out of that. They're going to burn throughout the ages. Throughout eternity, people's going to burn and scorch and turn in hell fire itself. My Lord God, have mercy. God, give us that that we need to get the word to the people. God, give us the wisdom, give us the love, give us the compassion. God, whatever it is we need to get the word across, give it to us. And as a witness, every one of you ought to be praying the same prayer. As a Christian, you ought to be asking God to give you that that you need to witness to somebody about Jesus. God, let me be a soul winner if I'm nothing else. How many knows the Bible said he that wins souls is wise. And God wants me and you to be soul winners. Amen. God will credit every soul to your account. I want some souls accredited to my account, don't you? Accredited to my account. 
I really do. But the devil has continuously, ever since the beginning, every time that God began to move in a great and a mighty and a powerful way, the devil's always come up with some kind of scheme. He's always come up with some kind of gimmick to try to cause the people to detour, go off in the spirit of error, ricochet off from the word of God. The devil will have you ricocheting off. You'll be right there, right, ready to step into God's glory. And the devil will come along and speak something other than your ear. And if you ain't prayed up, if you ain't where you need to be in God, the devil will cause you to just ricochet right away from the truth and end off over here somewhere in the spirit of error. Hallelujah. I believe what the Bible said when it said, buy the truth and sell it not. I believe that. And I know I said a lot of times, but it's a good word where it said, take fast hold of righteousness. Take fast hold of instruction and keep her. Hallelujah. Take fast hold of instruction and keep her. Let her not go, for she is thy life. How many knows that good instructions is sometimes hard to come by? Sometimes you have to travel many miles to get some good instructions. To get some true teachings. Some other to stir your soul and lead you on into high heights in God and deeper depths. Sometimes you have to pay a price to get a word like this. How many believe you do? Thank you, Jesus. Brother Gable, those people that came up here yesterday from New Orleans and Avondale, and all of them came up here and spent all the day out here and most of the time out in that hot, scorching, baking sun. That's a sacrifice. Willing to pay the price to be so tired you can't hardly put one foot in front of the other because you're so tired. People go to the prophet of God's meeting and, and they sleep in cars and back of pickup trucks and on, on the hoods and the trunks of automobiles and in the tents and on the ground. They, they sleep all over the place and, and sometimes they stay for three or four days. Sometimes they stay a whole week and some of them even stayed as high as, as the whole uh, revival. He might have 10 days or whatever the revival run. Hallelujah to God. I said glory to Jesus. I remember myself. We've done it ourselves. I remember one time in particular. I said something about one time here. But it's been a lot of times that we sacrificed to get this word because this word is worth paying the price to get. How many that's right? Hallelujah to Jesus. And God done put this word in Picayune, Mississippi, right outside of Picayune. Over here in Ozona, God done put a word right here. How many knows he has? This word is worth standing out in a broad and hot sun. This word is worth uh, having to sit down on a hot concrete uh, waiting until the man of God come back again to receive it. I said it's worth every bit of it. This word is worth your legs and your arms are tired uh, that you can't hardly move them. God told me yesterday, he said those people are paying that price because they love the word of God. He said somebody loves the word of God. He said they're willing to suffer for it. How many believes uh, if you really love God's word, uh, you're willing to suffer that you you might be able to get more of it. I tell you one thing, you need more. I need more. And you're going to get more. With a determination like this, God's going to let his righteousness reign upon you. And he's going to have something to shout about. You're going to have something to praise God over because the price has been paid. And I say glory to God. God knows all these things. I believe it does. And I laid down there on a hood of a 62 Oldsmobile that used about as much oil as it did gas over 200 miles which that was a close trip I was close to home that time I've been over a thousand miles up to a thousand miles just for a meeting or two hallelujah but laid out there and didn't have a nickel in my pocket didn't even have enough of money to buy a 10 cent coca-cola when it cost a dime didn't even have enough to buy one Coca-Cola and divide it four ways. Hallelujah! But I was hungry for this word. I was thirsty for this word. Boy, I was a Coca-Cola. More than I was anything else, I was hungry and thirsting after righteousness. And he wouldn't even nobody that had a drink of water. And we had to walk about a half a mile, or I guess at least a half a mile, even to get a drink of water. And went up around that service station. And most places where they have these revivals, uh, mobiles and exceptions, and pretty nice people over here in Mobile. And you know, was over in Mobile, and they let, it use the, let the people use the restroom and stuff like that, and, give, and you get drinks and things like that. But a lot of these here, a lot of these here service stations. 
situations and things like that where they put up these tents at. They don't want them people there to start with. And they won't let you use the restroom. They won't let you have a drink of cold water. Amen. To God, sometimes you have to walk a mile. If you give all your money in the offering, you'll have to walk a mile to get a cold drink of water. And time you get back, you're as thirsty as you was before you left. So it don't really do you much good. But God sees all these things. God sees you sleeping on the ground. God sees you sitting up in a church building and won't even run the air conditioner because, amen, you're trying to give even that it would cost to run the air conditioner. Let that be an offering to God that you're willing to sweat it out and pay the price. God, talk to me about it. Amen to Jesus. But you can believe God's going to smile upon you. Don't you ever fret yourself because when the roll is called up yonder, you're going to be there and it's going to be worth it all. How many believe it's going to be worth it all? And I say glory to Jesus because when that word of God comes down like a hammer and the final authority has come to pass and he shall say enter thou into the joys of the Lord. Amen. You're going to thank God for it. I believe you will. Go ahead and praise him. Clap your hands if you will. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Come out here and preach with headaches and everything else. And believe God to heal the headache. Won't even take a asthma or BC or stand back. Refuse to take them. Hallelujah. Been doing it for a long time. Just refuse to take it. I said, God, I'm trusting you for it. Come out here and I'll preach right here in this pulpit more times than one because I ain't had no sleep. I ain't had no rest. Thank you, Jesus. It'll catch up with you at a while. It'll catch up with the best of you at a while. And when you don't ever get no sleep, Harley, you, le you lose enough of sleep at a while. It'll sometimes do something to your head. It'll make you dizzy sometimes. How's ever been dizzy from loss of sleep? Yeah, it'll make you weak too. Come out here and trust God. Come out here, the first of this camp meeting. I ain't been about three services, two or three services. The devil attacked me in about two or three different directions. The devil attacked me. He attacked my lungs, and my lungs are just like I had a, just like I had a bowie knife, a sharp bowie knife, or a butcher knife, or something like that type, sticking in my lungs. There's a constant pain. It's hurting me day and night. I couldn't get no relief from it. Hallelujah. I said, God, I said, you know that I got a count meeting to preach. God, you know I got a revival to conduct. Thank you, Jesus. And I had the saints. Y'all begin to, some of you, I hope all of you that heard me say it, I hope all of you prayed for him. I feel like you, probably most of you did. I hope all of you did. I hope that y'all call my name somewhere during this count meeting. Hey, man. A lot of times a man of God lay hands on the whole congregation. He needs prayer himself. You ever thought about that? You ever thought about the man of God? He's just like you are. He needs prayer himself sometimes. Hey, Amen. If a man of God asked you to pray for him, you ought to count an honor and a privilege and start calling his name as soon as you could. Hey, Amen. How many believe that's all right? We all need prayer. We all need help. None of us is above prayer. How many knows this is the truth? Praise God. So we all got to have help. We got to hold one another's hands up. Yes, we have. And that there pain was in my right lung, and it's just like a knife. It was just somebody just stuck a knife in there, and it wouldn't take it out. And I'm talking about it was hurting me. It was hurting me something pitiful. And every time I'd preach, it hurt me worse. It started hurting worse. And then on top of that, I got to croot, and I couldn't hardly, <laughs> couldn't hardly talk. I, I, I got props at the house. Of, uh, the, the tapes and all for that was croopy. But, but that prophecy, God cleared my voice up and I prophesied. I, ain't that right? I come in here that night. It's on Monday night. Started on Friday night. I had Friday night service, Saturday morning, Saturday night, Sunday night. And it was the fifth night. On Monday night, the fifth service. On Monday night when I come in here and God spoke through prophecy, through me, through prophecy. When I yielded to that prophetic anointing, I couldn't hardly talk above a whisper real good. I mean, I could, I, I could talk a little loud, but you couldn't understand what I was saying. It's so hoarse. You know I'm telling you the truth. And I come in here, and that prophetic anointing moved up on me. And God began to instruct me by the Spirit. It was time to prophesy. 
God let me know that it's going to be thus saith the Lord a word from heaven through prophecy and I, my God I said God yes you know the condition I just I just let my mind think how many knows what I'm talking about I said me and God was having a, a, an internal conversation if you know what I mean hey, amen all the time I was obeying God I was doing everything with what I had to do with I was trying to do something to, to try to get the word out here to help you people how many knows that's right glory to Jesus I said glory to Jesus somebody said you probably have to get somebody else to finish the camp meeting now I said well I, I, I hope I don't have to do that hey, amen I'm trying to trust God I'm trying to believe God and I come out here on that up there uh, Monday night. Uh, hey man, God told me to get a cheer down there and sit down that cheer. And he gonna speak thus saith the Lord through me. I thought it was myself. My old flash thought within itself. God, how in the world am I gonna be able to say anything? How am I gonna be able to uh, obey you when I can't even talk hardly above a whisper? Hey man, but all of a sudden there's something that moved uh, on the inside of me and I felt a confidence. Uh, I felt a faith rise up in me uh, and my spirit said, yes Lord. Hey man. And about that time them words of prophecy begin to come forth and the Lord spoke for about 30 or 40 minutes and as fast as anybody could talk and God opened up my vocal cords and I ain't had no laryngitis since Monday night and here it is almost one week later and my voice is powerful and he knows it's strong tonight I've been preaching here for 12 services and ministering in 12 services but I feel like I'm brand new you know why? Because God is the final authority. And if you'll say yes to him, he'll take you over. God will move for you. God will help you. How many believe he will? Go ahead and praise him if you will. Go ahead and magnify the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, my God. I'm talking about the final authority. There ain't nothing coming behind this, saints. There ain't nothing going to follow this. Is that right? There ain't nothing coming behind the Word. That's it. That is it. Just think what you got. Did you know you got something other that's priceless in your possession? Did you know you are a blessed individual to own a Bible? That you got the final authority right in your hands. And it depends on you what you're going to do with it. Me and you are blessed people. You're blessed, sister. Burnett, you're blessed. You got that word in your hands and your lap right there. And you can read it any time you take a notion. And when you get down and don't, can't find no way up, that's the final word. That'll bring you up. That'll heal you. That'll deliver you. That'll save you. That'll set you free. How many believe it will? It'll encourage you when you're discouraged and when your friends turn their back on you and leave you all alone. Only thing you got to do is get right in here and say, God, what do you got to say about this thing? And God will pick you up and he'll set you on top of the mountain. Glory to Jesus. Oh my God, don't you love him tonight. Ain't something special here tonight. How many believes it is? Amen. I'm talking about that final authority. Oh, ain't his message is beautiful. I said, isn't these messages beautiful? Don't the Lord give us some beautiful messages though? God just keeps me you right up here to right up the date as man of God. Somebody said, man of God set up to date. I believe God's got us up to date, don't you? Praise God. Well, you ain't gonna get no more up to date than that. That's it. That's the final authority there. That's as up to date as you get, ain't it? I mean, how much more up to date can you get in this? There just ain't no way. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I love you tonight. Amen. I challenge you to turn around, look somebody in the eye, and say, I'm going to tell you something. Go ahead and tell them. I said, I challenge you to look somebody in the eye and say, I'm going to tell you something. Hallelujah. Go ahead and tell them. I'm going to tell you something another. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I said, Oh, yes. I'm going to tell you something other. There ain't no word like this word. I said, Go ahead and tell them. There ain't no word like this word because this is a word. And I'm going to stand with a word because it is a final authority. I said, God's word. 
is a final authority. How many believes it is? Glory to Jesus. How many feels that unction from the Holy One? How many feels that boost from heaven? God's going to give you a boost from heaven. You're going to be able to face that old so-called blue Monday, and you're going to wake up in the morning with a smile upon your face. Amen. And a whole sack full of devils ain't going to be able to bother you. And a whole bullpen of them ain't going to be able to stop you. You're going to have such a victory tomorrow. Amen. The devil better get out of your way. He better get away from your place because you're going to tread him on the foot. I said this word. Amen. When the devil comes out against you, you say, devil, I got God's word. And God's word is the final authority. And I ain't going to say nothing else to you. You're my word to get out of here. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Praise him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. That's it. The devil's going to have to go. Don't you believe he'll have to go? Wow. God ain't never had nothing with the devil. Ever since the devil tried to stand against God in heaven, God ain't had nothing for him since then. God cast him out or he can cast him down. He done, he done done it both. He cast him out and cast him down too. He, he worked him down to he didn't have no feet left. God whittled his, whittled his feet out money. Amen. God whittled his legs out money, end up on his belly. Ain't no fire tells the word of God. How many knows that the devil stood up right in the beginning of the, the serpent did, which was a type of Satan. The devil, the, the serpent stood up right and got the same forth crawling on his belly. Oh yes he did. Listen about what Jesus said here. But remember what Jesus said in Mark 13 and 34. He talking about as a son of man, as a man taking a far journey and he left his house and gave authority to his servants. Well, the preachers and the, the handmaidens and those that preaches and ministers and testifies the word of God. Those are the servants of the Lord. And to every man his work. And commanded the porter to watch. Amen. We've all got something to do. We've all got a job to do. That's right. We've all got a job to do. St. Luke 9 and 1. Let me read this to you. St. Luke 9 and 1. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Yeah, I tell you right now. Whew. All we got to do, saints, just believe the Word of God. If we can just believe God's Word, we have an unlimited source of power that lives within us. That's right. The disciples are the preachers, Jesus', is Jesus men. Amen. The Apostle Peter and James or John, any of them could went around singing a song, I'm a Jesus man. How many of those they could have sung the same song, I'm a Jesus man? Hallelujah. Because they were. They were really Jesus men. And he just give it to them. Here it is. I'm going to give you power and authority over all the devils. I'm going to give you the power and authority. Any, you cure any kind of disease you want to cure. All you got to do is just go out there and command that cancer to leave and it's got to go. All you got to do is just walk up there and, and lay your hand on top of their head and say, Go cancer! And you got the power to do it. Hallelujah. He said, I'm giving you power and there ain't no devil that can stand against you. Well, he did. He said, you got power over all the devils. He didn't leave out not one, not one spirit that came from, from the devil that he leave out. He said, I give you power over all the devils, all the spirits. Everything is not like God. You got the power to drive it out. Well, God ain't no respect of a person. You think that God's going to have anointed men of God in this day and, and they ain't going to have no power? You think that God's going to have predestinated, foreordained ministries in this generation and let their word fall to the ground? Well, if God did that, He wouldn't even be God. If God speaks, thus saith the Lord through me as an example, He'll bring it to pass. Got to bring my word to pass just as much as he brought Isaiah's pass. There ain't a bit of difference between me and Isaiah. 
Hallelujah. He was a man. That's all. There's no difference between Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. The only thing difference is they wrote a book about them and they ain't wrote no book about me yet. Of course, I wouldn't much want to read one that some folks write about me. I, I believe that some people could get together and write a pretty nice book about me, though. I believe I could put those testimonies together yesterday morning and I could come up with a pretty nice little book right there. I got me a, at least a booklet. <laughs> Amen. I could get me five or six chapters in a booklet or I could print it in a September edition of Cry of the Harvester. I could have done something good with it. I still got the tape. Amen. If I want to hear somebody say something good about me, I'll just turn that tape on. <laughs> Everybody all around me putting me down, I'll just go down and put that tape on and about, about a dozen or so people say some good things about me. Amen. <laughs> that about help me, mighty. Uh, God, everybody ain't against me. <laughs> hey, if you folks that believe there's something to me. Oh, he said you're going to have the power and authority over all devils. And you can cure them diseases. I'm talking about one right behind another. And even them unknown, unnamed diseases. God will give us power over them, won't he?